تبارك الذي نزل الفرقان على عبده ليكون للعالمين نذيرا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أما بعد Welcome to Educate Us A chat show has been developed to focus on the educational needs of our communities both nationally and globally with the key focus being the development of a new generation firmly grounded That new up and coming generation consists of our children, our youth our families and those who are in need of safeguarding new forms of education that will contribute to their future success inshallah in this show we aim to purify cultivate and nurture young like-minded individuals who strive to first and foremost uphold their faith thereafter building upon their knowledge implementing in themselves their communities while exhorting the best of manners As our beloved Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said the seeking of beneficial knowledge that will help us day to day is an obligation for every muslim so that any delay that's here from those who have specialized in their respected fields in order that they can educate us Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim welcome to educate us Today we have a guest, uh, Ustad Abu Taymiyyah, Hafizullah Ta'ala. Welcome, Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, so today we're going to talk about a very important topic to the Muslims. And this is a topic that really, if you focus and you think about it, it's the whole of the religion is affected by it. And that topic is Hifd and the importance of it. and uh, how to balance between the deen and the dunya and all these sort of things so i'll let you take the floor and uh, discuss uh, what you had in mind inshallah alhamdulillah rabbil alamin wa salatu wa salam ala ashraf al anbiya wal mursalin nabina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallama tasliman kathiran amma ba'd the concept of al hifd is something that the sharia encourages you can find that uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Uh, has mentioned in the Quran and likewise in the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You find that there is numerous pieces of advices um, where we are encouraged to memorize, and I'm going to inshallah ta'ala go into more detail shortly. And then you find also the companions who gave a lot of time memorizing, and then those who came after them. Mm. It's something, I mean, jil بعد jil, generation after generation, something that you know they always encouraged. not only themselves but they also encourage the people around them Allah. we know that the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was preserved through memorization so. um Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he tells us in the Quran bal huwa ayatun bayyinatun fi sudur alladhina utul ilm rather these are verses that uh, is in the hearts of the people of knowledge okay Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah ta'ala Uh, he mentioned something very profound commenting on this verse he said u'tiyat hadhihi al-ummah al-hifz this ummah has been gifted with memorization and then he said wa kana man qablaha yaqra'una ma yaqra'una kitabahum illa nadran as for the nations before the nation of muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam they only used to read their books subhanallah okay They never used to memorize it. ثم إذا أطبقوه and then after learning what's inside of these books, لم يحفظوه إلا النبيون. They wouldn't memorize it, but rather the only one that would actually memorize these books was the prophets. Uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has made this a nation that memorizes His speech. Okay, uh, and you find also through the advices of the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم, him encouraging it. Uh, we were told about Surah Al-Kahf. Man hafidha ashra ayatin min Surah Al-Kahf usima min fitnat al-Dajjal. Whoever memorizes the 10 ayat from Surah Al-Kahf is going to be protected from the trial of Dajjal. Also in another hadith we are told that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said nadhar Allah umra'an sami'a maqalati fawa'aha fahafidha. Uh, may Allah Azza wa Jal glow in the face And this is the message Allah is making dua for them, right? Mm. The one who hears my speech فحفظها, He memorizes it He comprehends it 
ثم يبلغها and then after that he conveys it Allah okay so this is now the message Allah alayhi wa sallam making dua for the one who memorizes the revelation um, and we know that the uh, speech of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as Allah tells us in the Quran in huwa illa wahyun yuha wa ma yantiqu anil hawa in huwa illa wahyun yuha he doesn't speak out of his own desires but rather he is nothing but revelation so to memorize the Quran to memorize the sunnah makes an individual mubarak you see makes one uh, really blessed mm. if we really think about all the blessed things that we are told about in the sharia you have um, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he became mubarak because the Quran mm. came down unto the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he became blessed mm-hmm. uh, and he became the best of the prophets and then you have Jibreel became the best of the angels yes, you know the Quran came down yes, through Jibreel right yeah. ruh um, and then you also have the month of Ramadan wow the month of Ramadan became the, the most blessed of months Shahr Ramadan الذي أنزل فيه القرآن because the Quran came down in this blessed month mm. Layla al Qadr became the uh, the most uh, you know greatest night mm-hmm. in the month of Ramadan which is blessed already uh, because إن أنزلناه في ليلة القدر you see so if somebody wants to become blessed in his life um, then you know be assured that the Quran you know turn to the Quran because the Messenger Allah عليه وسلم what did he say خيركم أن تعلم القرآن وعلمه the best of you are those who learn the Quran and then they go and they teach it والله you know صاحب القرآن the one who accompanies the Quran he will struggle to find anybody who's more happier than him hmm. yeah the blessings that it brings to his life and it just doesn't stop there even in the hereafter hmm. we are told as the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said يقال لصاحب القرآن اقرأ وارتقي ورتل كما كنت ترتل في الدنيا فإن منزلتك عند آخر آية تقرأه الله um, you know he's told to rise or عند آخر آية تقرأها uh, he's told to rise on, on the day of judgment uh, that's the one according to the Quran he's memorized memorized acted upon it he accompanied it mm. uh, you see I just want to touch on a point that you raised here and obviously we know the virtues of memorizing the Quran but there's something that you you touched on that was that the speech of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is revelation from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala as well and this memorization also holds a virtue and can bring blessings in our life and I think we find in nowadays that we give such a great importance to memorizing the Quran which is good it's uh, jameel amazing but what about the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and I think this is something that we I mm. think the viewers and all of us need to understand that this memorization holds a great virtue as well yeah without a shadow of a doubt um we know obviously that you know memorizing the Quran is the origin of it is the origin of all sciences um so much so that even Imam An-Nawawi rahimahullah ta'ala he said Whoever memorizes the Quran and also learns the Arabic language uh, properly, عليه سائر العلوم. All the other sciences they will open up for him. Subhanallah. Okay, and uh, the Quran and the Sunnah they are where we take our religion from, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, we're not just like Quran where mm-hmm. we just take from the Quran. We don't take from the Sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Rather, the Quran tells us to go and follow the Sunnah. Because the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would explain to us that which would be vague in the Book of Allah Azza wa Jal. Sah. وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الذِّكْرَ لِتُبَيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ مَا نُزِّلَ إِلَيْهِمْ As Allah says, we send down upon you the Qur'an so that you can clarify to the people that which mm-hmm. has been sent down upon them, right? And uh, and also if you look at the way the Qur'an is uh, explained, the tafsir that is done, uh, and, you, and you find this in the books of Usul al-Tafsir, the fundamentals of tafsir, the first step to take is to explain the Quran with the Quran. And the mm-hmm. next step is the Sunnah. Wow. Uh, use the Sunnah to explain the Quran. So. Because you can't know um, how many prayers you carry out through the day and the night without the Sunnah of the Messenger. Sahih. 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 Allah says in the Quran, mm-hmm. salata wa mm-hmm. zakat. Establish the prayer. Mm-hmm. Okay, how do I go about establishing mm-hmm. uh, this prayer that Allah Azza wa Jal speaks about? Does it? Tell me in the Quran that there is five daily prayers mm. and what to say and what not to say. No, mm. you have the Sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam for that, like the mm. Hadith of Bihurairah, when the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam taught the companion 
uh, how to pray, the one mm-hmm. who did not pray the proper prayer. Mm-hmm. Until the end of the mm-hmm. hadith. So you find that in the sunnah, it, um, it, uh, it elaborates that which has been mentioned vaguely in the mm-hmm. book of Allah. And there is in the sunnah as well, that which isn't mentioned in the Quran. Mm-hmm. Okay. So um, you need the Quran and the Sunnah in order to be able to live Islam. Correct. Okay. And when an individual now memorizes, Wallahi, there isn't a feeling that is more sweeter than uh, knowing how to carry out your religion. Allah. You know, Allah. the fact that you have it on the back of your mind every time you find yourself in a particular circumstance, situation, and then you have the hadith flowing through your mind of what to do and what not to do. You know, you're carrying the wahyain in your heart. Subhanallah. So you're true. carrying the revelation, Super the true. two sources of knowledge in your heart. And uh, and how can somebody then turn around and say to me that you're wasting your time or uh, there's maybe more greater things in life that you might want to mm. uh, take time take in. Time. Um, this is so, so true. Yeah, yeah. So, so true. So I think, the, you know, obviously this is the asul and the foundation and how important the hifth mm. is and how important memorization is because you're carrying the two things that the sources of our religion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how does one now balance between their deen and their dunya? So mm. my, one might say... Something that came to my mind before we go into this point. Sorry. Like, uh, you know how we love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? And we want to be like him. That's right. Okay. Um, doesn't it only make sense that... Uh, we study the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with every step that he took and every move that he made, right? Mm. And um, if we claim to love the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, we, we learn about him, mm. right? Uh, even there's a verse in the Quran which Imam Ahmad Rahimallah Ta'ala he called the Ayatul Mihna, the, the verse of examination. And um, this verse is uh, when Allah Azza wa Jalla said, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ الله Allah. Say to them, Muhammad, if they really love Allah, then follow me and Allah will love you. Mm. Right? And uh, Hassan al Basri, the great Tabi'i, he commented on this and he said, Some people claimed that they love Allah and His Messenger. So he tested them with his verse. So um, the true lover of Allah Azza wa Jal, His Messenger, he's going to spend a big chunk of his life learning about the Quran, mm. memorizing it, carrying it in his chest. It becomes like the walking Quran. Like you are carrying what Allah sent down upon his messenger. Allah. And then you have the messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's Sunnah. Mm. It's like you're a walking Bukhari. Mm. Okay, you're a walking Sahih Muslim. Mm-hmm. Okay, with all these hadith which speak about how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam lived his life, mm. you're carrying it in your chest. And whenever you find yourself in that situation, you're there, you know, Quickly uh, acting upon how the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam lived his life. Wow. You Perfecting see? like your manners, exactly. your mannerisms, and everything. And that can only be done. This is a way of life, as they say, right? Mm. Um, by studying it and memorizing it. Mm. Because if you just study it, a lot of time, at 10 time, you forget. That's correct. As opposed to somebody who's memorized all of these hadith, it's just flowing through his mind. Mm. You see? Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. So again, so you know that brings me back to that question mm. I asked: that how does one now take this information and know that their brain they have to give a lot of attention to the Quran, a lot of attention to the Hadith, and you know and memorize? How do they do that with the lifestyles that we have? Like one child might be in school from the hours of nine till three, and you're saying now you have to do hifth, and some people might be in university, some might work. How do we balance between the deen and, our, and, and the dunya that we ha- we're okay. living? Okay, very good question, because it's a, uh, subhanAllah, just the other day, I was speaking to a brother about, you know, balancing between the two, uh, how he really badly, subhanAllah, wants to learn the deen of Allah, Azza wa Jal. But obviously, the moment you start, uh, you know, getting kids, mm. and you've got family, you're not going to have the same time that you had before on your hands. Sah. Okay. Like you have maybe uh, now. And um, and there's a way to balance it. There's a way to balance it. And there's a number of things that we can speak about. But the first thing is that you really have to put your mind to it. You have to show Allah that you really want it. Okay. As for going into the pursuit of knowledge half-heartedly, mm. it's just a... 
you know, you're, uh, you can call it maybe like a losing battle. Yeah. Okay. Even mm. some of the scholars of the past, like a Zuhri, rahimahullah ta'ala, Muhammad Shihab Zuhri, uh, and Shu'ba, uh, they all mentioned that um, if you give your all to knowledge, you're only going to end up getting a little bit. SubhanAllah. So imagine if you only give if, like a little bit, to it, bit yeah. you're not gonna, <laughs> you shouldn't much. expect to get much, you see. Yeah. So you're gonna have to give it your all um, in order just to get a little bit. طيب. But then obviously you've got our circumstances here, we're in the West, we've got, you know, trying to get an education. And mm. um, I, as an individual, um, went to university. Okay, I was studying civil engineering. So not in any way <laughs> am I uh, going to sit here and belittle the importance of mm. getting an education and things like that. Mm-hmm. But as time went on, um, the conviction in my heart just became more and more firm that why we spend so much time learning about Pythagoras theorem. So, A squared equals B squared, but that's C great. squared. Our kids, if you ask them today, um, They'll tell you all about condensation, evaporation, <laughs> alliteration. Right, yeah. huh? Was it alliteration, right? Not alliteration. Uh, alliteration has been a long time. It's a long time. Huh? And all the other shations that are out there, right? That's correct, yeah. Mashallah, they know inside out. Mm. And uh, But when it comes to the deen of Allah, it's, it's so sad. Wallahi. I remember, subhanAllah, this is well before I went to Medina. After I came back from Yemen, um, I stood outside of the masjid. And I started questioning some of the uh, children over there. Mm. And uh, so I started asking them, you know, very casually, mm-hmm. um, what's, the, what's the meaning of Islam? Mm-hmm. Some of the kids turned around and they said, oh, it means peace. Okay. Some said it's a way of life. Uh-huh. And the reality of the matter is, is this what Islam actually means? Uh-huh. So I started explaining to them that Islam has three components. Mm. You know, mm. uh, to submit mm. to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with monotheism, with tawheed, and also to be submissive with regards to your obedience to Allah Azza wa Jal, right. and also to free yourself from shirk and his people. And they looked at me like, wow, what have you just told me? Well, what did you just tell me? Exactly, yeah. And, um, and you can clearly see that they had a completely distorted, um, and of course, you know, peace and way of life, these are elements of what Al Islam means. But is it in essence what Al-Islam means? Mm. So I remember, subhanAllah, in eight different masajid for the next eight weeks, the khutbah was about what does Al-Islam mean? Allahu Akbar. Wallahi. Like, subhanAllah, like we throw our kids into these jungles. And I call it a jungle. I've been to university and I've seen the onslaught uh, on the Muslims there. Yes. And how easy it is for them to um, to slip away from Learning the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and knowing their basics. Mm. You have to understand that there is Orientalists. People who learn our religion. Mm-hmm. Not their religion. Yes. They are learning the religion of Islam day and night in order to use this uh, as a mechanism to strip you away from your religion. Allah Akbar. Wallahi, even the way he quotes the verses of Allah. Mm. You think to yourself, this is, and he's, he's, a, he's not even a Muslim. Yeah, yeah. Some kafir guy, and the tajweed is there and everything. SubhanAllah. But we as Muslims, we haven't gone out to learn the religion. And then by the time it's too late, once they've apostated, because we as parents, we haven't uh, really put in the time and the effort to instill Islam into them. Mm. We we'll get a phone call saying, oh, please talk to my son. You see, see, see this is something that, you know, some parents might argue that you know I send my children to madrasa. I, you know they go to school. Yes, okay, but we've got Quran at home. They pray. Is this really in, instilling the Islam in them? Mm. Is it r- removing them from the uh, danger of shubhat and and the shahwat? Yeah. So obviously, when it now comes to the fitna of shubhat, um, there must be ilm. There must be an individual studying the Deen of Allah Azza wa Jal. Yes, memorizing Quran, you know, it comes with such great benefits. Every mm. harf that you're reading, you're getting a reward for it. As we are told in the, in the hadith, again, you know, 10 rewards for every letter mm. that you read. Mm-hmm. Um, SubhanAllah, you know, the reward is immense with regards to that. But um, there also has to be an element of uh, you studying the basics of your religion, how to be able to rebuke some of these doubts. 
Um, and and the way to get to that point is you need to build yourself a foundation. Mm. Okay, what a lot of parents uh, do, which Allah Mubarak is very good, they send their children to Quran school, and they memorize the Quran. But are they being told basic Islamic studies? A lot of the time, it's not. Mm. Okay, um, so this is again, you know, a responsibility that uh, we should really look at. Um, Learning about you know the uh, uh, learning about Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and some of the doubts mm-hmm. that the kuffar they throw against our children because if he doesn't know he's gonna go into this jungle as we mentioned before and he's in this arena where he has all of these uh, shayateen mm-hmm. throwing their arrows at him mm-hmm. yeah it's gonna be yeah so there has to be you know one studying the Deen of Allah and uh, especially now you know the COVID nineteen it brought a lot of Khair, mm. um, where one can be studying online. That's right. Because uh, even Subhanallah, uh, a, at at this uh, college that some of our brothers run called Knowledge College, people go to school in the morning, they go to university, then in the evening mm. they're taking like small little books like Kitab Tawheed. Allah So Allah. they're combining between the two the uh, dunya studies mm. and also the Deen studies. Mm-hmm. Because my brothers and sisters, Wallahi. Um, you know, I recently lost my brother at the age of 22. I was stabbed in the neck. Um, it just made me think so much more, you know, that at the age of 22, look how young he was. That's around the age that somebody graduates from university. So, okay. Imagine you spend all of that time learning about maths and engineering and things like that, which is good. But then you pass away. Mm. You know, your life comes to an end. What do you have um, to save yourself from the fitting of the grave, you know? What are you going to take with you? That certificate, yes, it's going to help you in your dunya. But Allah, at the end of the day, I'm saying that somebody who's studying civil engineering in a top university, right? That certificate is not going to benefit in your grave. Mm. That brings to mind, subhanAllah, something that... Um, there's always two hadith that come to my mind when this kind of uh, discussion pops up. One of them is the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi when he said, Inna rajul la yusalli sittina aman. There is one who prays for 60 years. Fama tuqbalu lahum in salat. But his salahs, his prayers are not accepted from him. La'allahu yutimmu ruku'a wa la yutimmu sujood. Perhaps he completes the ruku'a. La'allahu yutimmu ruku'a. Perhaps he completes the ruku'a but he doesn't complete the sujood. Mm. And perhaps he does the sujood properly um, But he doesn't do the ruku' properly All of these years of his life Because he didn't take out uh, Some time in his life to learn the basics Salah has not been accepted from him My dad one time he told me a story Okay uh, He was telling me that there was a gathering And you had all you know types of professionals there so when the time of Salah kicked in, Dhuhr prayer, they all looked at one another to see who's most qualified to lead the Salah. So what they did was they put the doctor wow. uh, to lead the Salah. So when they put the doctor forth, he started leading the Salah, right? This is a Dhuhr prayer. Hmm. And uh, to everybody's astonishment, he starts reading uh, the Fatiha loudly when leading the Dhuhr prayer. You know, Achieve. this is a man who's maybe what? In his 60s, in his 70s, maybe doctor. now, right? Doctor. Medical doctor. But when he came to the Dhuhr prayer, you see, um, another something that I saw going around on social media, was a famous actor who, who died in uh, in Egypt. And um, so his janazah arrived, right? So everybody's like, all his uh, actor friends, singers, they all participate in the Salat al janazah and we know when you pray the Salat al Janazah, it's four takbirat, right? Mm. Allahu Akbar, and you read the Fatiha. Allahu mm. Akbar, then you do the Salah al Nabi. And then Allahu Akbar, make dua. And then after that, you salam out after the fourth. Mm. Allahu Akbar, right? So, uh, as the Imam said the first Allahu Akbar, okay, they prayed, they read the Fatiha. And these are all singers and actors, right? The second Allahu Akbar, they all go into Rukur. Subhanallah. 60s. They're in their 70s. Some are even older than that. Why am I mentioning this? Uh, 
I'm not mentioning this out of belittlement or to make fun of these people, but rather from the angle of, is it really fair that we spend so much time learning everything else except Allah Azza wa Jal? But when it comes to Allah, it's only when I find time. Mm. When I find time. Okay, we uh, we build, subhanAllah, as, uh, we, we, you know, we, we build our lives, okay, disconnected from Allah. Allah is always second. It's always what is going to bring me money first. And then when I get the time, so then true. am I, you know, uh, so true. turn to Allah. So true. Yeah. So the question is now, like, how can we instill, obviously, Understanding the importance of taking hif, the importance of actually not being a balance, but there being more weight on Islamic uh, preference mm. than the dunya preference, because that's what's going to benefit you. How does the hiv, how does memorizing, how does that change or help us in our journey? Would you say that instilling in our children from a young age uh, a lot of memorization? When they get to a certain age, they've got the hadith, they know how to navigate, so now they can be better individuals mm. if they do go to worldly sciences. Or are we saying that it should be a lifelong journey? And Jamil, nice. Um, you have to understand that hiv, uh, it eases the knowledge that we're pursuing. Wow. Okay. This is something that helped me, and this is the advice of the scholars, uh, present and past. Mm. Uh, an understanding and also hiv, they are two things that go hand in hand with one another. Okay, it's not just like us memorizing like Paris and mm. not knowing what we're memorizing, right? Mm. Um, mm. So when you memorize the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and as we mentioned before the statement Imam Nui, you find that everything else, you know, starts becoming easy for you. Okay, because they all, somehow they come back to the Quran and the Arabic language. Mm -hmm. Okay, Allah, it will make things so much easier. Okay. And uh, if they're memorizing at a very young age, uh, as Hassan al-Basri, again, we mentioned Hassan al-Basri quite a lot. He's a great tabi'i. He says, العلم في الصغر كان نخش في الحجر. Um, attaining knowledge from a very young age is like carving into a stone. Allah. What happens when you carve into a stone? It's there. It's, it's going to remain it's there, gonna right? Remain. Um, and this is why I never memorized the Quran at a very, very young age. I was like maybe 18 around that age. But those who did memorize the Quran at a very, very young age, subhanAllah, one, there, there is times when they leave it mm. more than everybody else who memorized it when they were older. Mm. And they just need to come back, refine it, you know, just mm. go back mm. a little bit, refresh mm. it, and it's there for it's them. There. Mm. It tends to stick. And likewise, everything else that you teach them mm. at a very young age. Um, I still remember from this very day some of the advices that my dad used to give to me when I was still young. Wow. You see, uh, I remember even like something that my mom said to me. She said to me uh, when I was trying to memorize the Quran and, and then she caught me, I think, on my MP3 at the time, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Listening yeah. to music or something. And she said to me, Muhammad, you're not going to be able to combine between memorizing Quran and, um, and listening to music. It's just mm. not going to happen. Mm. But you know, we always look at our parents as if they're, as if they're backwards, that mm, they don't, they're, they're mm, out of touch, you know? Mm, 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 huh? mm. And we're more smarter because we're from the West yes, and they're yeah, from the. Yeah. Huh? And subhanAllah, later on, I came across a statement of Ibn al Qayyim in, in a line of poetry where he said, The love of the Quran and the love of music are two things that can't come together in one's heart. SubhanAllah. And then you begin to appreciate your parents even more. That's right. So the advice is that one gives to his children at a very young age. You might think that it's falling on deaf ears, but the reality of the matter is the more you repeat it, the more it will stick. Mm. Okay. As if, uh, but if you go in with a negative mindset, oh, they're not going to, they're not going to understand anyway. Mm. Yes, they're not going to understand. Yeah. Even the hadith of uh, the young child who was eating one time with the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Amr ibn uh, Salama. He said, one time I was eating with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and my hands were going everywhere. Mm -hmm. My hands were going everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, so the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said to him, Ya Ghulam, Sammi Allah, Kul bi yameenik, Kul bi mayirik. Because they mention the name of Allah, <laughs> eat what's in front of you, mm -hmm. uh, and eat with your right hand. Like, subhanAllah, if you now put this into context with what happens today, I've heard with my own very ears, 
a relative saying when I told, look, your daughter's listening to Justin Bieber. Oh, she's just a little kid. Mm. She's just a little kid. You know, don't worry. She'll grow out of it. Really? Mm. You know, what one gets used to from a very young age. Normally sticks with them. Normally sticks with them. Mm. And that's not to say that uh, if you advise them accordingly at a very young age, later on they might uh, even go um, astray. Mm-hmm. You know, at the end of the day, you fulfilled your uh, your responsibility. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, you know, the advice is that the parents give to their children from a very young age and the effort that they put in. Like I still remember till this very day, you know, I can't remember where it was, but I have some images in my mind of where I was sitting, the building itself, mm-hmm. you see. I don't know exactly where in, in, in Holland it was. Like me, you know, being taken from one place to another to read Quran. Mm-hmm. And my dad taking me to Taraweeh. And it really had an impact on me, even when there was times when I fell off completely, when I was in London. Um, I would feel that guilt in my heart if I wasn't going to Jum'ah, mm. if I wasn't praying. Um, so yeah, these kind of things really help, as opposed to if someone never had that advice, was never told anything about his religion. So he asked himself, like, what, what impact is it going to have? Like, why should I even do it now? Mm. Mm-hmm. There isn't anything that's kind of like pulling him back towards that. Yeah. It's oh, so true. So... Uh, next question I really want to ask is mm. What is a good method to, That we could advise our children Teach our children Or uphold ourselves In how we memorize the text The book of Allah Azza wa And the son of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam As we know This is going to help us Navigate through life And like you mentioned Those times where We might slide slightly We're pulled back Because of that Which is retained in our me- memory mm. And that which we have Of, of fear of Allah Azza wa So what's the be- best method To Bring about that uh, solidity in terms of uh, like uh, as as uh, techniques, yeah, techniques mm. or times of the day, or is there anything that stands out that a person mm. should do in order to manage their hiv? Mm. This is actually a principle for everything that a person studies: at takrar, mm. um, you know, constantly repeating that which you are memorizing. Whatever you've memorized and you read it so many times, right? It's bound to stick with you. Even the poet, he says, He says, uh, be repetitive when it comes to knowledge. Mm. Indeed, repeating something uh, quite a lot, he says, uh, and it's one of the greatest things that aid and assist an individual in uh, gaining that solidity with regards to that which he's studying or memorizing. And then he says, uh, he will reach a point where um, he will end up, you know, treasurizing that knowledge. He will attain it. And it is a sweetness which you can't describe with words. Hmm. And then he goes on to say, uh, And then he asks, What is this leather? You know, what is this type of sweetness that a person gains from um, uh, repeating knowledge? Okay. Uh, and then he gives a piece of advice. What is this type of advice that is given to the people? He says, Okay. He says, Don't get bored. When it comes to um, constantly repeating knowledge, perhaps you'll, you'll see this sweetness later on once it becomes solid. What he's basically yeah. trying to refer to is today you put so much effort in, you repeated it so much. Months down the line, you got busy. Later on, you come back, you just refresh it a little bit. Mm. It comes back as it was. Wow. And then you remember all of that knowledge again. Um, it's there with you. Mm. Okay. Um, so that's uh, something very important that one has to do. People think, okay, I've just run through the Quran now, I've memorized it, I've gone through the 114 chapters, mm-hmm. and khalas, I'm a half of the Quran. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The reality is that memorization actually starts now. Mm. You know, this is the piece of verse that one of my teachers gave me. Once you've finished, 
The reality is you haven't finished. That's mm. just stage one. The stage or phase one. one. Yeah. The real memorization starts after you finished. Because what you've done is, when going through the whole Quran, reciting on a teacher, you've taken little bits and bobs here, you've read to your teacher, but you haven't gone through the mutashabihat, the similarities of the verses. Mm -hmm. And um, because, you know, we know that the Quran is, is quite similar with one another. Mm -hmm. There's chapters that um, are similar to others mm -hmm. in other parts of the Quran. So uh, what that will allow you to do is... Um, really just master the similarities in the different verses. Mm. Um, like uh, some of the techniques that uh, uh, some of our teachers taught us when I was in Yemen was that once you finish the Quran, 30 days, 30 day training, one juz every single day and that juz has to be like water. It's fine. Okay, yeah. it has to be like water. Um, you can't make a mistake. If you make a mistake, you're gonna have to do that no, juz again. again. Yeah. Okay, and if you have to repeat that juz again, Okay, every mistake that you had, you have to just underline it with pencil. Mm -hmm. Okay, and make sure you completely remove that by repeating it so many times. You might even reach sometimes that you're trying to connect this verse with the next one a hundred times. Mm -hmm. Like uh, when Allah says in the Quran, "Qul ya ayyuhal kafirun, la abudu ma ta'budun." Qul ya ayyuhal kafirun, la abudu. Qul ya ayyuhal kafirun, la abudu. Mm -hmm. So the ayat are connected. Mm -hmm. You're trying to connect the end part with the. Following. Beginning mm. Some ayat are long So you just get the end And then with the mm. So you do that 30 Allah. Juz you know And here you're just repeating And repeating Repeating And then you do two juz every day So you're going to finish the Quran In 15 days um, And then you move on to three Then you move on to five Okay And In this period You're just taking out All of your mistakes mm -hmm. And you're familiarizing yourself To the different mutashabihah The similarities Between this verse And that verse what I would personally do is I would write the uh, the, the 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 similar verse mm -hmm. on the side of the page in pencil. Okay. Okay. So I know now this one's fat. This one is what, uh, even though the verse is وَإِنَّ هَذِهِ أُمَّتُكُمْ أُمَّةً وَاحِدَةً فَإِنَّ هَذِهِ أُمَّتُكُمْ أُمَّةً وَاحِدَةً. Mm -hmm. So you can see there's a wow and a fat there. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you find that one verse in Surah Al-Baqarah and then the other verse is yeah. in Surah Ibrahim. Like for example, وَيَذْبَحُونَ أَبْنَاءَكُمْ وَيَسْتَحْيُونَ نِسَاءَكُمْ In some verse it doesn't have the wow. يَذْبَحُونَ mm. You see what I'm saying? Um, so all of this just helps. Okay, because what tends to happen is one becomes very demotivated. He's left it a little bit. Or he thinks it's half of the Qur'an. He comes back. Mm -hmm. It's just become very watery again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And because he sees now, oh, I have to go through everything again, and he just kind of like just falls off mm -hmm. from reviewing the Quran. So now you've basically done five juz. You finish the Quran in six days. Then you do ten juz, ten, 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 ten. and then twenty, and then twenty again. Mm -hmm. So you've done the first twenty, last ten, and then the first ten, mm -hmm. and uh, and then you read the whole Quran in one sitting. Oh, right. Yeah, one sheikh even said to me, Subhanallah, that. One is not a true hafiz until you're able to lead taraweeh. Yeah. So in that, you know that you've got this Quran solid. Solid. Yeah. Yeah. And then you'll be so relaxed in the sense where um, every day after Fajr, um, you, uh, you just review the Quran and you get on with your life. Mm. And you start your day with the barakah of the Quran. SubhanAllah. Wallah, you'll feel so... Uh, Wonderful, just waking up, just you know, mm. living your life, mm. you know, because you started with the Quran. Mm. Mm. But someone might ask, let's come back to your question. And I think this is the million dollar question for most people how do I balance between both? Mm. Okay, one of the things that we mentioned earlier is show Allah as well that you really want it. You know, in Allah says, um, if you show that khair. Uh, if Allah Azza wa Jalla sees Afwan, if Allah sees that goodness in your heart, He'll give you that goodness that you want. There is people that um, day and night they're thinking about how can I find time in order uh, to free myself up to learn and to memorize. And Wallah, Allah helps them. Mm -hmm. Wallah al -Azim. Allah opens doors for them. Okay. That show Allah Azza wa Jalla that you really, really want it. And 
the other thing you can do is try and find a time when nobody is going to be occupying you. Yeah, this is very important. Yeah. yeah. I remember I asked this question to Sheikh Hukash al Kamini. Mm. Have you heard the Sheikh Hukash? Yeah. 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 The, I love his recitation. Oh, he's a yeah. gem. Allah yeah, Allah 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 Allah. yeah, with Allah regards to his Quran. And like for me, um, there's very few people that when I look at them, I feel very inspired. Mm-hmm. Okay. And me, I'm one of them guys, when I see somebody who's memorized a lot, I get excited, you know? Yeah, of course. Yeah. 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 And Sheikh Okash is like that for me. Yeah. And, and apparently, from what I've heard, he never stopped memorizing even now. SubhanAllah. Like I, I, I thought maybe everything that he's memorized now is and just, and just it was before. before. And now he's just doing muraj yeah, on it yeah. because you're an imam of a masjid. Um, just he's reviewing. got institutes, he's exactly. teaching, he's got students. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I asked him when we met in, uh, not last year because there was no hajj, but the hajj before that, me, John Fontaine and brother, another brother, we sat down with him, um, brother Bilal. We sat down with Sheikh Okasha. Uh, John was like, you know, John Fontaine was like, uh, we're gonna. And I was really looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah. In order to ask him some of these questions, I said to him, Sheikh, you know, um, how do you find time? I'm sure you're, you're probably married to a couple of, mm-hmm. uh, you know, you've got popular wives, you know. Mm-hmm. Allah barik, you know, Allah big barik, Sheikh. And, Allah, you know, yeah. <laughs> and he started laughing, you know. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and um, like, how do you do it? When do you find time? Mm hmm. Because like I, this is something that I wanted to get to the bottom of uh, when I actually go back to the UK mm. after finishing Medina because mm. there's going to be a period where I spend time there. Mm. Not in a million years was I thinking that, you know, this year we're going to be here because the whole COVID-19. Sah, sah. And it's difficult, Allah. It's, it's really difficult. May Allah Azza wa help us. Amen. 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 So he said to me that try and find a time when nobody's going to be busy. You. So I said, when, Sheikh? Because mm. I try to think about it You're going to be mm. leading the Salat Fajr time You're probably mm. going to have people busy Even after Fajr That's correct yeah. When do you find time that no, no one's occupying you Because I said to him Like I, I personally When I go back in the summer mm. Whatever I memorize Is just eight months of the year mm. Whatever mandumat And mm. fiat And hadith mm. that I'm doing mm. It's just I say to myself mm. You just need to go there Just do your da'wah And then come back And then continue again mm. But I said to him Sheikh I still want to I just memorize the maybe the khutab and mm-hmm. every now and again hear bits and bobs, but I don't see that as proper memorization. Mm-hmm. He said, um, before Fajr. Because wake up an hour or two before Fajr and uh, and engage in memorization. Is anybody going to be knocking on your door around that time? Everyone's going to be asleep in bed. Your wife's going to be asleep. <sighs> Who's probably going to mm-hmm. need a lot of time throughout the day as well. Your children mm-hmm. are asleep. It's true. So he goes, that's the time when you can basically get to yourself. Get for yourself, yeah. So I think what we take from that is that you know one of the things that is it's going to impact our memorization a mm. lot is finding that time. Yeah, it's not so much like juggling everything, but just taking a time out. This is my time for memorization. I'm going to fix it, lock it off. That exactly. time the phone's off and ha the ho ha the ho, and also being consistent, mm. being consistent, even if it is something small, mm. like uh. Ibn al-Jawzi rahimahullah ta'ala in his kitab Sayyid al-Khatir he says تقليل المحفوظ مع الدوام أصل عظيم في الحفظ he says um, memorizing a little while you remain consistent is a very important principle when it comes to memorization Allah okay like people think that you have to memorize three pages and four mm. pages and ten lines of poetry لا mm. think about it for a moment Tell me of a manzoma that you might be particularly interested in, like a poetry. Grammar. Arabic grammar. grammar. Okay, Arabic grammar. Yeah. Al-Fiyat ibn Malik. Yeah. It's a thousand lines, Sahih. right? Let's just say, for example, round it up a thousand lines of poetry, right? If you just memorize three lines every single day, mm. ach, three lines is not a lot. Mm-hmm. Forget about three lines. Mm. Two lines. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because we are, you know, we 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 we're foreigners, mm-hmm. huh? And um, yeah, we're foreigners, and mm-hmm. we find it more difficult. Let's do two. Mm-hmm. How many is that going to be on three hundred sixty-five uh, days of the year? Well, it's almost complete. That's it's uh, double, double, right? So doubles it up. You're looking up? at something like seven hundred and something. Yeah. And then maybe another half year. Khalas, you're done with an alfia. Well, I think yeah. what you've highlighted there is that consistency on the minimum. And once you're actually doing that consistently, exactly. you might find days that, hold on, I'll do three exactly, or four. Yeah. 
and then you that's that that consistency exactly. it, your fullback is like two okay minimum two that's that's what I'm gonna go is that correct to say that that's yeah, the way yeah, you think course. about it of course mm. of course like if somebody does three now he's gonna finish the alfi in a year let's mm. just say for example Saturdays and Sundays he takes off mm. okay um, that's 28 days no not 28 days that's maybe what uh, minus eight days from 30 22 days a month mm. you're still coming out with a lot mm. Mm. In a year and a half, you can finish that al That's if you're doing, what, three lines of poetry every day. Mm. But we know people do much more than that. Mm. I think it's very interesting you've highlighted that because I do know of a brother that uh, he was kind of ridiculed in his class, right? Because he was taking such small chunks. Everyone was like, yeah, we're doing page and X, Y, and Z. Mm. But in the two years, he had completed what they didn't complete, mm. even though they started the race really strong. And I think it's that, you know that methodology that some of us have is like oh, I want to hit the ground running and I want to mm-hmm. get as much in as possible, but rather slow and consistent wins the race, right? Yeah, Muhammad bin Shahab al Zuhri, the great Imam in Hadith, he said this. Mm. He says, "Woman أخذ العلم جملة ذهب عنه جملة." Whoever tries to take so much knowledge altogether at it. once, he's going to end up leaving it. Mm. You know, ولكن العلم على أيامه والليالي. He said, "You know, علم." comes through uh, uh, you know days and the nights mm-hmm. uh, you know it's going to take some time mm-hmm. even some lines of poetry that uh, I find really really beneficial is um, it's when the poet says وَلَا تَكُنْ مُسْتَعْجِلًا فِي الطَّلَبِ مَا فَازَ عَجْلَانُ بِنَيْلِ الْعَرَبِ do not be مستعجل do not be hasty when it comes to seeking knowledge and then he says مَا فَازَ عَجْلَانُ بِنَيْلِ الْعَرَبِ someone who's hasty has never achieved anything in that which he was trying to attain. So, so true. Okay. Uh, he says, uh, you know, when you have a days that you're trying to grow, mm-hmm. would anybody in his right mind, like, Halfway through Just say Oh let me just take it And start eating it Never You're not going to do that right You're going to wait for it Yeah And he's going to You're, you're going to go through A lot Like mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. going to get tiring And There's a process to yeah. it And everything Yeah He goes No one in his right mind Would do that He says So he says Take it easy You're going to bear its fruits mm-hmm. Very soon So he said He said Sometimes يحصل المرء بها حكمة. He says. Then he goes on to say. وإن مسائل اجتماع النقط. The way a, a a river comes about is or a flood mm. is when there's a whole load of uh, raindrops. Drops. Yeah. Okay. Those drops form together. And yeah. Then they, exactly. Yeah. And then it yeah. turns into a flowing river. That's right. So yeah. that's why he says اليوم شيء وغدا مثله من نخب العلم الذي تلتقط. Today is something. Tomorrow is something mm. Okay He will attain wisdom through this mm-hmm. And this is how the river comes about Because you have a whole load of raindrops that come together That's right. That end up, you know, taking a whole city That's correct So um, you're going to have to take your time Take it easy Because wallahi, يعني, I've seen it happen so many times Even when I was in Yemen There was a, there was a big fitna This was the fitna of durus mm-hmm. Fitna of lessons Yes, I call it a fitna. Like um, people came from all over the world in order to attain knowledge. They wanted that, you know, sacred knowledge, right? And the knowledge is found in the books. So, and uh, a lot of brothers would, okay, this sheikh now has authored a book. He's going to be teaching it. It gets announced on a Friday. Mm. Sorry, Thursday night. Okay. And everybody jumps on it. Two weeks later, another sheikh opens the book. Everybody's running towards that direction. Mm. And then, this one and then that one taking five, six, seven, eight lessons at the same time. Scattered. Just scattered all around. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you're not going to come out with anything solid. That's right. Yeah. But rather you solidify something and you can move on to the next one. As for memorizing five, six things at the same time, you're just going to end up tiring yourself. You're not going to make it solid. And um, even subhanAllah, something very profound, Ibn Al-Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned was, Man istatala tariq da'ufa mashyuh. Whoever tells himself that the road is very long, 
it's gonna be it's gonna get very weak when it comes to walking. Mm. Like think about it for a moment, right? You if you got you the mindset like to the mindset I'm go like there, you know, oh, dragging your feet, right? You're dragging your feet, exactly. Like, yeah. But you can't tell yourself that, like, you know, mm. um you just basically take every day as it comes. Like pit stops. Slow yeah. yeah. the whole. Uh, the whole, it's a bit like Formula One, huh? That's right, yeah. Like pissed off, yeah, right? Pissed off, yeah. Yeah. So if he like, tries to take the whole, like, how many laps do they do? I, I don't yeah. know how many laps they do, yeah. but if he tries to do the whole round, he's gonna crash. Crash, yeah. Yeah, that's a very good example. Fatih Allah alik. Yeah. Pit stops. Right. Yeah. So you're gonna you're gonna take things easy, slowly, slowly, slowly. Akhi wallah, you'll take so much knowledge in a very short space of time, and that you're gonna surpass a lot of people, mm. even though that's not the Look intention. Good, yeah. But that's exactly what's going to happen. Remaining consistent, not doing a lot, okay, little but consistent, and not being hasty. Just take mm. it easy. Yeah. I think this is a very vital point that you mentioned here is because a lot of us sometimes we feel like, you know, taking small amounts of knowledge or not going to every single class like we're mm. falling behind. Nowadays, that mentality of our class comes up with run to it. But rather, like if we look at it, if you've got, uh, you know, dedicated structure, yeah. structure and you're going through it in a tariqa, a, a, a path, a, like a order. Is that the correct word? Yeah, yeah, yeah you're yeah. taking basically the knowledge in a structured way. So, that's exactly it. Taking a structured way, little by little, you're going to arrive at a goal in the yeah, end. Yeah, you know, you're going to come out with a lot, yeah. And uh, you come out with a lot. So, you know, myself at the top of the list and all those viewing, like, don't feel disheartened that uh, you might take a small amount each day on a longer journey, you know? Yeah, um, To yeah. set yourself little goals and, and Habib, I know a brother... It took him eight years to memorize the Quran. Wow. And every day he was a reaver actually. Mm. Um, he was doing every day just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Even if it means two, three ayat, mm -hmm. two, three ayat, if you do it every day, it turns into a page. Yeah. And that page turns, turns into, into a hizb. Yeah. And then that hizb turns, turns into, into a juz. juz. Ah. And then juz, by the time you know it, you finish 10. Mm. But he remained consistent. This is very important. Allah. And I, that brings to mind, subhanAllah, I'm just, I'm just mentioning a whole mm. load of things that. <laughs> Like um, that's just coming to my mind, right? And and I think it's very crucial for people in the West that have now grown old. Mm -hmm. And when I say old, they're no longer at madrasa age. Yes. Like, what do you do after that? What we need to do is we need to swallow our ego. Well, like there's times when I told brothers and some of the students I was teaching, one of them, may Allah bless him, Abdullah from East London. I said to him, Habib, you want to remember the Quran, right? How old are you now? Quite old, right? You're no longer at that madrasa age. Mm. If you really want to memorize, you want to stay consistent, go to Duxi. Mm. You're probably going to be sitting around kids mm. who you're a couple of years, uh, or a couple of years younger than you. Mm. But if you want to, like, when you think about it, um, the uh, the structures that are out there with regards to learning and memorizing, mm -hmm. they're mostly in the madrasa. Yeah, yeah. And they're mostly so, for young. That's correct. And, and finding adult classes from what I know, and Allah knows best, it's very difficult to find. Mm. Like as adults sitting around and they're reading and That's memorizing correct. Quran, reading to a teacher the same way the kids do. That's correct. And, 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 and not having that consistency of being able to read to somebody can really hinder you. It really does, yeah. So I said to him, Akhi, you really, are you ready to do anything, right? So like, go do it. Well, Allah is going to hit your ego, me sitting around little kids, mm. but you're going to have to do it. You know, uh, and this is <laughs> when humility comes in. You know, I smile because there is someone in my life um, that I met and he stuck with me. Wallahi, he's mm. never left me. Uh, his name is Muhammad. Mm. He, I met him when he was 88 years old. He accepted Islam Salam. when he was 85. And he accepted Islam because of his workers. When he got sick, terminally ill, none of his family came to visit him. But rather his workers who are Muslims mm. came to visit him. And he asked, they asked like, why are you coming here? You're my workers. Mm. It's Islam. This is, it, we it encouraged us to visit Allah the sick. Allah Allah Allah. So, cut a long story short, uh, I was speaking to Uncle and he said to me something very profound. He said to me, uh, I said, he's, he's sitting in the kids' classes. I said, Uncle, come, Uncle, you know, <laughs> Uncle, you shouldn't. He said, I am three years old as a Muslim. So, treat me like a three years old. Allah I've got so much more to learn. This is and he, and in his I, fullest. Yeah. Humility in its fullest. And I was amazed by him, shocked by him, that he would sit with the kids. And learn how to read Arabic at 88 years old. And he would learn in the class and it just it just blew me away, honestly. SubhanAllah. And, right, and, that's, and that's like you really said, it's, 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 it's something that we have to go back to. Even if we have to re revisit wudu or whatever it might be, 
Like we we do it with humility because why we want to get to the goal in the right way. And this can in fact be a man, mm. a preventative from actually attaining that knowledge. Mm. When you keep telling yourself, I'm old now. Mm. And I've seen this in my years of studying knowledge in Yemen, the match, and likewise in Al Medina. Mm-hmm. One has stayed a couple of years in whatever institute he may have been. He tells himself, now I need to stop attending these lessons. Not because khalas, he's learned it. Mm-hmm. But the new students are going to see me attending these classes and they're going to say, um, oh, why he's, he, why, he's, you yeah. know, why is he still in the class? Oh, yeah. he's still got a lot of learning to do. Yeah. And that would hit people. Mm. But why should it hit you? Why should you care? Mm. You see what I'm saying? And so what does he end up doing? He stops going to these classes. Like even subhanAllah, the element of ikhlas and why you are, you know, uh, pursuing this knowledge becomes deeply affected. You start, you know, paying too much attention to what the people are looking at mm. and what the people think. And you're not going to get anywhere. That's right. Akhi, that example, Allah Akbar, I'm going to quote you on that. <laughs> Inshallah. Yeah, it's... Uh, this man was uh, very really, Yeah. Yeah, honestly. He mm. benefited me in so many different ways. And he was a man that uh, at his age, he would still pray the night prayer. And he would be the first in the front row. Oh. And you would just see from him stuff that would bring you to shame. And, you know, he would just say, look, I'm only three years old. I've got 85 years to make up for. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. I just want to pick something out of some, this conversation we've had, and it might seem a little bit off topic, but uh, I've noticed a lot that you refer to the poems of the ulama. And I've also noticed from our Ustad uh, Abdul Rahman Hassan, he also uses this method of poetry. Would you say that uh, in this day and age, it's something we need to re- revive and revisit? Mm. Because a lot of the texts of the ulama, the scholars, they summarize it in a poetry format. Is that correct to say? Mm-hmm. And that, you know, as a young child, you know, we give them nursery rhymes. You know, I was watching a, a podcast the other day when a, a guy was saying, ring a ring of roses. You know what comes next, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And certain things like that. Sticks they, with you, right? Sticks with you. Yeah. So should we not like encourage, okay, let's do some poetry and, and, mm-hmm. and revive this this uh, this revision. of One that. thing I prefer is to memorize poetry over uh, a nether. Mm. Which is just basically a text mm-hmm. Because as you mentioned The poetry rhymes And it sticks mm-hmm. Until this very day Something that I remember From nursery is Sticks and stones May <laughs> break, break my bones, bones But words will, will never hurt me, hurt me. <laughs> And uh, it's something That I still use To this very day mm-hmm. People think well, like, Why is that quoting A nursery <laughs> rhyme for yeah. But in reality This is what The scholars like Imam Shev Rahimallah ta'ala Told us as well with regards to when you know the dog keeps barking and the caravan keeps moving. Mm. When people are speaking about you, should it really hurt you? Mm-hmm. Words will never hurt you. It's basically an encouragement. Mm-hmm. Stop caring about what people have to say. That's correct. And you find there's so many statements that I can mention to you right now from Yam Shafi, your lines of poetry. You can't even say who be cool, you can 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 be cool. And so many other lines that he mentions, you know. Uh, I'm not going to mention it. It's just going to prolong everything. But like in po- point is, it really helps you remember. Mm. As, as opposed to like text. Mm-hmm. Because it rhymes. Mm-hmm. I just find it, you know, everyone has a preference. Some people, they um, find it easier to memorize text. Mm-hmm. Um, some people find it easier to memorize poetry. Mm-hmm. I'd rather memorize poetry. Mm-hmm. Like you have the... The wajibat of the salah in like four lines of poetry. poetry yeah. Like me, I'll be very honest with you, no way am I going to remember uh, wajibat to thaman, like the eight wajibat, mm. just like me. You mm. always, you know, you, you mentioned, what was the other one? Mm. That's how you're going to be. Mm. Or the 14 pillars. Mm. <laughs> That's going to be really difficult. <laughs> so for example, myself, with regards to the pillars of the salah, there's no way I'm going to remember 14. Mm. If you were to ask me to list it. Mm. But I'll mention the five lines of poetry. Mm. That has the 14 pillars And there it is mm-hmm. That allow me to remember everything So uh, everyone's just different mm-hmm. It does make things easy um, I prefer it And uh, especially if we understand the poetry It makes it so much easier mm-hmm. Yeah it makes it so much easier I think if you look at it from from Quote unquote the West standards right And you know They have instilled in our children The use of nursery rhymes mm-hmm. To teach them In the most part rubbish Mm. But they do that, why? Because they know that children ex- uh, absorb rhythms and rhymes and they stick with us. And like we mentioned, Ring and Ring of Roses, it's in my head. I'm like, you know, 
yeah, 34 years old and that's something I took mm. when I was in primary school but it's still there so I think that uh, for the educational purposes behind it for our children I can see there's a huge benefit for it mm. um, and I think we just have but to most of it is in Arabic right mm. and I think it's worth mentioning uh, recently brother John Fontaine told me about this that uh, Abu Toba you may have seen him mm -hmm. uh, I don't know much about him, but I can, mashallah, you know, some of the things that I've heard with regards to the works that he's put together, like, apparently he's put, like, uh, uh, poetry for, like, all the chapters of fiqh together. Wow. That his little kids memorize, his children memorize. Wow. So I think that would be a, a game changer. Yes, of course. For our kids in the West. That's right. They yeah. know the English language and they want something to memorize. Mm. They start memorizing this and then he teaches them how to make wudu. Yeah. I wish I could do things in the English language, but I can't. My English is not the best. Mm, mm. Me learning Arabic helped my English because I was mm. all like street language that I was, you know, mm. when I was in London. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't have that gift. Mm -hmm. But I said to John, you know, once it's ready, please, I would like to be the first of one course. to have a copy of that. And myself, you yeah, know, my yeah. kids, yeah. So I mean, he, it's just something that he's told me, which I'm really looking forward to reading, mm -hmm. that really could be a game changer for the kids. Mm -hmm. Apparently he wrote it when he was in prison. I believe it's just that. chapters of fiqh, you know, yeah. like how to make wudu, how to pray, and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, I do believe so because, like, you know, everything that's got a rhythm to it or a certain rhyme to it, we find that it sticks with us, and and you know, uh, much more so than just you know someone having a general conversation. Mm. So I couldn't see the benefit there. Um, I want to make this segment now about some of the doubts that have been brought up and try to tackle them, if you don't mind. Mm. So I'm going to go through a doubt at a time. And uh, some of them <laughs> are quite strange, but <laughs> nevertheless, uh, we have to mention them. So the first doubt is it doesn't allow, memorizing doesn't allow for a deeper understanding of a subject. What, what do we say in response like, to Like I this? disagree with that. And anyone who memorizes will disagree with that as well. Uh, who has tasted the sweetness of memorization? Because we don't, we don't, we don't just say memorize. Mm. Um, in fact, when you memorize, like I'm going to give you an example, right? Um, you're going into an exam. What do most people do? They memorize the answers. They memorize the answers, right? Mm. And they keep repeating it. Mm -hmm. They keep repeating it, mm. right? Um, and of course, we're not necessarily going into an exam when memorizing the Quran, unless some people, you know, mm. they go for Quran competition and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and likewise, other sciences. But the more you read it, the more it sticks with you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And once it's stuck with you, you now taking the explanation of what you're memorizing, it just makes it much more easier. So. As opposed to someone who's not familiar with it. Mm. Like, for example, right? You have a Surah Thalatha. Got the first page You've like repeated it So many times So many times So many times So many times You have a basis On the back of your mind now Okay uh, And maybe you've You've, you've taken just a, a brief explanation Like you've looked up The translation mm -hmm. And then you go to a sheikh I will guarantee you That when You take that Which you've just been Repeating so many times To a sheikh And now he starts Explaining it you will already have had the foundation in your mind. Now you just basically take the details that come with it, which you then add on to the foundation you've already built. SubhanAllah. Okay. So now all you need to do is take that explanation mm -hmm. and go over it mm -hmm. and uh, bring it up to the level of what you've memorized. Mm -hmm. As opposed to the one who is not familiar with the text. He hasn't memorized it. He goes to the teacher. He's got two things now to comprehend True. or to take in. Yeah. The text itself Oh, what's what, Okay first let me look at the text mm -hmm. And then the explanation mm. So it's going to take him Maybe triple the time True You see very what I'm true. saying Very true So I remember our brother Yasin One time he mentioned this He goes um, If you're going to like Read something so many times anyway You might as well just memorize it quickly <laughs> And uh, and then basically <laughs> Take the explanation You so, know so, so. And also you know. Does this not help us In order to so the goal of knowledge, correct me if I'm wrong, is to remove ignorance from yourself uh, and then teach it to others, right? Mm. Um, obviously implementing actions as well, but to teach it to others. Mm. So once you've got it in your memory, you've mm. memorized it, is it not now easier to, to explain to others? Exactly. So this would kind of exactly. throw that one out of the window. Exactly. Like the deeper understanding mm. would be to able to explain yeah, ex what you've learned. Okay, there's been times, like me, like I struggle when I'm doing a khutbah to read from some or to have something in front of me mm -hmm. 
and to also be able to speak to the congregation directly. Mm. I struggled with that. Mm-hmm. So I said to myself, the only way I'm going to get around is by memorizing it. Mm-hmm. When you have something uh, on the back of your mind, memorized, solidified, mm-hmm. and you're relaying it onto the people, you you can speak directly to them. Yeah, it's free. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It flows. Mm-hmm. And th- that person who's sitting there feels like you're directly speaking to them as opposed mm-hmm. to when you're like this mm-hmm. and then like that and then like this. True. People tend to switch off. True. Okay. True. And I always say to the people as well, okay, somebody's about to apostate and you've just met him somewhere in the middle of nowhere. Mm. It doesn't have to be the middle of nowhere. It could be anywhere. There's no time to go get your books. Are you going to say to yeah. them, Achy, wait for wait me. Wait a second. <laughs> Let me go home. Yeah. Get it. Look at what the poet says. إذا لم تكن حافظا واعيا فجمعك للكتب لا ينفع أتحضر بالجهل في مجلس وعلمك في البيت مستودع If you're not somebody who has حفظ and comprehension You just gathering books is not going to benefit you Are you going to come to a sitting with your ignorance while your knowledge mm-hmm. is uh, stored up in the, yeah. in, the, in the warehouse or in the closet mm-hmm. Okay, You need your ilm over there, right? Let me mention two very quick incidents now that you mentioned this, right? Something that happened to Al-Imam Al-Ghazali, rahimahullah ta'ala, Abu Hamid Al-Ghazali. One time he was carrying his books and they were wrapped up in, a, in bags. So as he's traveling, uh, he comes across some highway bandits, so they rob him. Mm-hmm. Okay, So they rob his bags, them thinking that he has some expensive, valuable stuff inside of these bags that they've just robbed from Abu Hamid Al-Ghazali. So he's chasing after them, please give me back my books. Mm-hmm. My books are not going to benefit you. So the big thief stopped. فَضَحِكَ كَبِيرُ اللُّصُوصِ The leader, he started laughing. So he looked at Abu Hamid al Ghazali and he said, كَيْفَ تَزْعُمُ أَنَّكَ عَرَفْتَ عِلْمَهَا فَلَمَّا أَخَذْنَاهَا مِنْكَ بَقِيتَ بِلَا عِلْمٍ وَأَصْبَحْتَ لَا تَعْلِمُ شَيْئًا Because how can you claim that you've learned something? This is a thief saying this. Okay? How can you claim that you've memorized or you've learned anything? Uh, and when we took your bags from you, you were left without knowledge and um, you didn't know anything. SubhanAllah. So this is a man who's written books that is very well known, doesn't need an introduction. He's mm. got Al Mustasfa. We study in the university, right? Rawdha to Nadir. Nuqudama, he benefited from, uh, you know. Uh, Al Ghazali is Mustafa. That's basically like yeah. what people go back to. Um, so Abu Hamid Al Ghazali. Also, look at the Tawadu, right? This is again an important lesson for a person. He never just said, oh, This guy's a thief. He just robbed me. Forget him what he says. Let me just continue with my life. He said, Hada Mustantiqun Antaqahu Allahu Al Haqqa Liyurshidani Bihi Fi Amri. This is someone that Allah Azza wa Jal caused to speak the truth to me, which directed me in taking the correct path with that which I'm pursuing. This is something that we need to just sit on for a second, if you yeah. don't mind. That this bandit, this thief, came with the truth mm. and he accepted it. Yeah. Well, I How that. many times in this day and age are we presented with the truth from someone who is maybe a righteous individual mm. or someone who has your interest at heart, but you won't take the truth from him? Yeah. Reminds me of something that Fadil ibn Iyad mentioned. He was asked about a tawadu, about being humble. He said, That you submit to the truth and, uh, and you act upon it. Mm. And you lower yourself to the truth, you see. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. And you lower yourself to the truth, and you submit to it and act upon it, right? Mm. And then look what he said. وَلَوْ سَمِعْتَهُ مِنْ أَجْهَلِ النَّاسِ قَبِلْتَهُ مِنْ Even if you was to hear it from the most ignorant of people, you accept it. And look what he says after. وَلَوْ سَمِعْتَهُ مِنْ صَبِيٍ قَبِلْتَهُ مِنْ And even if you was to hear it now from a young child, you accept it from him. So going back to... Uh, what happened to Abu Hamid al-Ghazali? He said, when I reached my destination for the next three years, I memorized everything. So the next time something happens, I wouldn't be left without knowledge. <laughs> you know? And Allah is very important. Like, you know, uh, the ilm that you have, it just allows you the most important thing is to act upon that knowledge. Mm-hmm. As opposed to you've read something and then you forget tomorrow. True. The reason why we are called insan, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ you know, in the insana lafi khusri, mankind, mm. 
Some scholars say, وَمَا سُمِّيَ الْإِنسَانُ إِلَّا لِنَسِهِ The reason why we're called insan is because we forget a lot. Mm-hmm. Huh? So uh, we forget, and by you memorizing, it keeps it with you for a longer duration as opposed to if um, you were to just read it. Mm. Keeps it with you for longer. Even though, even if it, once you memorize, you're going to be forgetting. But you have to what? Revise. Mm-hmm. You have to keep revising. The other story I wanted to mention is um, something that happened to, that happened to Ibn Hazm. Ibn Hazm, he was known for his very strong arguments. You had the former Dahib mm-hmm. that we follow today. Ibn Hazm was like, no. He would bring his own arguments and he would, you know, uh, stand by it. And his, uh, you know, his, the evidence he would bring and the um, the points were very, very strong and convincing. Mm-hmm. And that wasn't liked. That wasn't liked. He was like a Zahiri, right? Mm-hmm. So um, some of the others who followed the Madahib, and of course it's a wonderful thing to be going through the Madahib because the Madahib help you get to your Ghaya, mm-hmm. your objective, which is to understand the Prophet Sallallahu speech. speech. Mm-hmm. So there's nothing wrong with following the madahib. But there was a lot that went on in his time. So they threatened him that uh, they were going to burn his books. So when they wanted to do that, he dropped a couple of lines of poetry on them. <laughs> okay. And uh, the famous lines of poetry that he mentioned was, فَإِن تُحْرِقُ الْقِرْطَاسَ لَا تُحْرِقُ الَّذِي تَضَمَّنُهُ الْقِرْطَاسُ بَلْ هُوَ فِي صَدْرِ Because if you burn these you know, these cases and these bags of books, right? You won't be able to burn that which is inside <laughs> of these book, uh, inside of these bags because these books <laughs> that inside of these bags <laughs> in my heart. <laughs> Wherever I go, the ilm follows me. <laughs> if I was to get off and get back on, <laughs> it's always with me. <laughs> and it's also going to be buried with me <laughs> in my grave. <laughs> and he says, دعوني من إحراق رق وكاغد وقولوا بعلم كير الناس من يدري. He goes leave of this uh, you know uh, this attitude of uh, uh, of wanting to burn books. And he says speak with knowledge so that people can see who knows. Mm-hmm. You know because you know when you defeat somebody in an argument mm-hmm. it can hit someone's ego right. Mm-hmm. Because, خلاص, if you want to you know. Mm-hmm. Let the people see you as they bring your own mm. arguments and your evidences and mm-hmm. whatever have you. And then he concludes and he says, وَإِلَّا فَعُودُ لِلْكَتَاتِهِ بِبَدْأَةً فَكَمْ دُونَ مَا تَبْغُونَ لِلَّهِ مِنْ سِتْرِ Otherwise, go back to kindergarten. <laughs> go back to the nursery and study. Start learning again. Start learning again. <laughs> Allah, okay. You know? Oh, Allah, Allah. Yani, when I look at the advices of the people of the past, it just serves me as an encouragement. Mm. And I can see the benefits. Wallah, sometimes you're in the middle of nowhere um, and you just need something. Mm-hmm. Or sometimes someone asks you to give them a piece of advice, something that they really need. Mm-hmm. And you're, you can you sit there, oh, Wallahi, man. Mm-hmm. Akhi, it could change his life. So. There's been so many cases, someone asked for a piece of advice and it was very specific. Mm-hmm. And then you remember the hadith that you memorized time ago. Mm-hmm. And Akhi, it's a sweetness mm-hmm. that words can't describe. Mm-hmm. Even uh, Abdul Razak al Sanani, he says, كل علم لا يدخل مع صاحبه الحمام فلا تعد علما. Every knowledge that doesn't enter with you into the toilet is not knowledge at all. Do not see, do not count it to be knowledge. Meaning, you don't take your books into the toilet, right? Or do you take your brain out mm. when you go into the toilet? No, you yeah, don't you do don't. that. You take your, you go in, yeah. and uh, some people, yeah. no names, sometimes uh, oh. they just they might be in the shower and a hadith are going through their heads. Mm. Mm. You know, it's uh, oh. it's uh, it's achieved. Yeah. So I think. Uh, we'll bring it to a conclusion mm. I think there's a lot has been discussed And, and it's a, a very fruitful discussion yeah. So in conclusion mm. What would you advise those listening Myself at the top of the list uh, And those viewers watching uh, How to understand this field And the importance of it The memorization How to implement it And how to benefit from it Okay You asked a very very uh, comprehensive question yeah. <laughs> Okay Um you know, we mentioned a lot of methods and mm. some techniques and things like, not necessarily techniques, maybe that's a, for how to actually memorize. That's maybe a discussion another time. But uh, what is most more important than everything that we spoke about is your intention. Mm. And there's some lines of poetry by Hafid al-Hakimi. 
um, that I always personally remind myself with because it's a fit enough all of us. Well, life, ilm, mm. you know, attaining, uh, you know, vast amounts of knowledge in short spaces of time and memorizing a lot can be a big fit enough mm. for all of us. Mm-hmm. Um, especially now when you enter into the field of uh, da'wah. You know, if Sufyan al-Thawri, rahimahullah ta'ala, you know, admitted that he had a problem with his intention, then where do me and you stand, you see? Oh. He said something very profound when he said, um, mm-hmm. I haven't wrestled and struggled with anything more than my intention. Because it keeps changing. Internally. Yeah, from time to time. Like even akhi, sometimes when you're given a khutbah, you're given a lesson, if you're not constantly fighting your nafs, because you know you quoting a hadith, you quoting verses and things like that, um, it could hit you in a way where you become self amazed. Mm. So it's a battle, okay. So Hafid al Hakimi, he speaks about the reality of knowledge. He says, وحاصل العلم ما أمل الصفات له فأصغ سمعك واستنصت إلى كلمي. He says the reality of knowledge is that which I'm about to inform you. So listen attentively and pay attention. He then says, وَذَاكَ لَا حِفْظُكَ الْفُتِيَا بِأَحْرُفِهَا وَلَا بِتَسْوِيدِكَ الْأَوْرَاقَ بِالْحُمَمِ The reality of knowledge isn't memorizing the fatawa of the scholars word by word, letter by letter. And also filling your exercise books with ink. That's not the reality of knowledge, he says. And then he goes on to say, وَلَا بِتَسْوِيدِكَ الْأَوْرَاقِ بِالْحُمَّمِ وَلَا تَصَدُّرُ صَدْرِ الْجَمْعِ مُحْتَبِيًا تُمْلِيهِ لَمْ تَفْقَهِ الْمَعْنِيَ بِالْكَلِمِ Also, it isn't you wanting to sit in front of the crowd, you know, sitting on the chair while everybody's listening, wanting to have that position where you're like, um, sitting on the big chair Relaying that knowledge That's not the reality of knowledge Because if you think that's the case Then you haven't understood what I'm about to tell you So he says then وَلَا تَصَدُّرُ صَدْرِ الْجَمْعِ مُحْتَبِيًا تُمْلِيهِ لَمْ تَفْقِهِ الْمَعْنِيَ بِالْكَلِمِ وَلَا الْعِمَامَةُ إِذْ تُرْخِي ذُعَابَتَهَا تَصَنُّعًا وَخِضَابُ الشَّيْبِ بِالْكَتِمِ Also it isn't You having a big imama Showing the people, I am a person of knowledge now. Okay? Giving off the impression. That is not the reality of knowledge. And then he goes, وَلَا بِقَوْلِكَ يَعْنِي دَائِبًا وَنَعَمْ كَلَّا وَلَا حَمْلِكَ الْأَسْفَارَ كَالْبُهُمِ It also isn't um, being somebody who is able to say يَعْنِي يَعْنِي, you know? Uh, and also نَعَمْ mm. Because uh, you learn a bit of knowledge. Sometimes what happens is someone sees, you know, he's a bit flashy with how someone else speaks, you know, the words that he, use, that he uses. And you're saying to yourself, yeah, I just want to speak like that. Mm. Okay? To sound flashy and have beautified speech. Because this is not knowledge. And then he says, وَلَا بِحَمْلِ شَهَادَاتٍ مُبَهْرَجَةٍ بِزُخْرُ فِي الْقَوْلِ مِنْ نَثْرٍ وَمُنْتَظِمِ Knowledge also isn't having beautified, decorated certificates. And you being able to quote lines of poetry and text, you know, because it can come across very, very silky, right? Mm. You think to yourself, wow, man, he's got all these lines of poetry. I want to be able to quote like that. He says, this is not knowledge. So he concludes and he says, بَلْ خَشَّتُ اللَّهِ فِي سِرٍ وَفِي عَلَنِي فَعَلَمْ هِيَ الْعِلْمُ كُلُّ الْعِلْمِ فَالْتَزِمِ But rather the reality of knowledge is خَشَّتُ الله. To fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the knowledge that you have في السر وفي علني In private and also in public You see um, Purpose isn't just collecting information you know mm-hmm. But rather to act upon it and to gain closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when an individual feels like he's not getting much, 
We say to you, Habibi, you know, you're in ibadah. Whatever you are learning, as long as you're implementing in your life, then you're fulfilling the objective of that which you are seeking. And that is to gain closeness to Allah Azza wa and to act upon the knowledge that you are studying. And then he says, فَعَلَمْ هِيَ الْعِلْمُ كُلُّ الْعِلْمُ فِي This is the reality of knowledge. So stick with it. SubhanAllah. And this is very, very profound. I'm not going to sit here and talk like, um, you know, it's easy for me, you know, and giving da'wah and standing in front of the people. And then people are coming up to you after the khutbah um, and saying to you, Akhi, Jazakallah khair and this and that. And then students are saying, oh, we want to memorize, give us advice and things like that. It can really get to a person. It really can. Mm. But you always have to remind yourself. It's a battle that we're going to be facing until we meet Allah Azza wa Jal. Mm. So always just checking why you're memorizing, why you are studying is uh, it's very, very important. And uh, the most important thing is our relationship with Allah Azza wa Jal. Again, this is something that is going to help. Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, he said, إِنَّمَا يَحْفَظُ, ال... إنما يحفظ الْمَرْءَ عَلَىٰ قَدْرِ نِيَّتِهِ One he memorizes in accordance to his intention. Hmm. So Shaykh Salih al usaymi commented and he says, فَإِذَا قَوِيَ إِخْلَاصُهُ uh, أو فَإِذَا نَعْمْ فَإِذَا قَوِيَ إِخْلَاصُهُ قَوِيَ حِفْظُهُ If one is very strong in his uh, sincerity, then uh, his memorization will become strong as well. SubhanAllah. So um I think that, that's 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 the sorry to no, no, for that, for but that. I think that's the perfect place to end on it's 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 a conclusion that is comprehensive. Yeah. If you really want to memorize and you want to give the importance to memorization, first check your intention. Secondly, understand that your relationship with Allah Azza wa Jal is a direct impact on your memorization. And thirdly, understand and comprehend that the level of ikhlas that you can achieve will reflect on the level of memorization mm-hmm. you'll gain. And on that note as well, subhanAllah, um, as we were speaking now about the relationship that one has with his Lord and how it can affect one's memorization. It's, uh, it's, uh, you know, to mention Imam Shafi rahimahullah ta'ala as an example, because he was an ayah. He was a wonderful role model when it comes to memorization and what Allah Azza wa Jal gifted him. He was a sign. Even Ibn Al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentions this when he speaks about the effects of sins. Mm. He lists like so many effects of sins. The first point that he mentions is Hirman al being deprived of knowledge. And then he mentions the incident of when Al-Imam Shafi'i sat in front of Al-Imam Malik. These are two great imams from the four great imams, you know, of fiqh and the former Dhaib. Um, when Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala saw how sharp, how intelligent, okay, how strong his memorization was, he said to him that, um, Inni ara anna Allah qad alqa fi qalbika nuran, fala tutfi'ha bi dhulmati al I can see that Allah azza wa jal has placed a nur in your heart. Do not extinguish it with the, uh, the darkness of sinning. And uh, subhanAllah, Imam Shafi rahimahullah ta'ala, later on in his life, he complained about his memory loss. And they say the reason why his memory got affected is because he saw a woman's ankles. She was wearing bangles and his memorization was so strong that he had to cover one side of the book in order for him to be able to take in everything on the other side so it doesn't get mixed up with that. He had to cover, that's how strong his memorization was. So he mentioned some lines of poetry to his teacher, Shakotu ila wakiin, or the incident between him and his teacher, Shakotu ila wakiin, so hivdi, far shedani ila tarkil maasi, far akhbarani bi anna ilma nurun, wa nurullahi la yudali asi. So I complained to Waki about my bad memory loss. And he told me to leave off sinning. He didn't say to him, oh, I'm Shafi'i, you know, خلاص, you've made it already, you're becoming old. No, he said to him, for shedding in a turkey, my house, he told me to leave off sinning. Allah, and he told me that this ilm is a nur, and uh, this nur is not going to be gifted to an asi, to a sinner. Whether this is with what we look at or what we say with our tongues, you know, how we backbite, how we slander, how we speak about others. 
the way I look at it as every time you look at the opposite agenda, and I'm not looking at the first look because the first look has been forgiven. If you continue looking, expect to forget something. So I always wondered why did Imam Shafi rahimullah ta'ala go to Waqiya ibn al-Jarrah? Because he said, I complained to Waqiya, even though he had Imam Malik. We know the caliber of Imam mm-hmm. Malik and so many other teachers he had. So one time I found uh, this uh, incident in Sir Alam al-Nubala by uh, Imam al-Dhahabi where Ali ibn, Kh- uh, Ali ibn Khashram, uh, he said something about this man called Waqiya ibn al-Jarrah. He said, مَا رَأَيْتُ بِيَدِ وَكِيعٍ كِتَابٍ قط. I never saw a key ever carrying a book. إِنَّمَا هُوَ الْحِبْدِ Everything was memorization. So we asked him, مَا الدَّوَاءُ النِّسْيَانِ What is the cure for constantly forgetting? He said, لَوْ أَخْبَرْتُكَ تَعْمَلُ بِهِ If I was to tell you, you're going to act upon it, he goes, إِي وَاللَّهَ I will, by Allah. He said, تَرْكُ الْمَعَاصِي مَا جَرَّبْتُ مِثْلَهُ قط. Leave of sinning. I haven't tried anything like it. And this is exactly what Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said. He, he said, إِنِّي لَأَحْسِبُ أَنَّ الرَّجُلَ يَنْسَ الْعِلْمِ بِخَاطِئَةٍ يَعْمَلُهَا I see that somebody, he forgets knowledge because of a sin that he falls in, into. Even Imam Malik says something similar. And so many of the scholars, you can see that uh, the, the kalam is mutatabiq. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's uh, mutatabiq as in, يعني, it goes hand in hand with it. Goes in, it's in accordance to one another. So um, your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most important thing. If you want to get anywhere in life, if you want to be able to attain this nur, this is not like engineering or medicine or whatever have you. Okay, this ilm is, is a completely different ball game. It is a muhibah min Allah. It's a gift from Allah azza wa jal that you take directly from Allah and you ask him to give it to you. Something very profound that our Shaykh Salih al he said, and he really stuck with me. He said, إِنَّكُمْ لَن تَنَالُوا الْعِلْمَ بِقُوَّةِ حِفْظِكُمْ وَلَا بِجَوْدَةِ فَهْمِكُمْ وَلَا بِكَثْرَةِ مُلَازَمَتِكُمْ لِلْدُرُوسِ He said, you're not going to attain knowledge with having strong memory, okay? Or um, how good your understanding is. Or you attending so many دروس, so many lessons. وَإِنَّمَا تُصِيبُونَ الْعِلْمَ بِصِدْقِكُمْ مَعَ اللَّهِ you're just going to attain knowledge with how truthful you are with Allah Azza wa Jal. So you're going to have to keep asking Allah Azza wa Jal. You know, last third of the night, oh Allah makes things easy. Make things easy for me. Help me with my understanding. Because you know, there's three components. We don't just say always to the people, you know, memorize, memorize, memorize. Mm. That's just one out of the three elements. And I don't even mention this. So you memorize, you attend classes with the mashayikh, the ulama, and the students of knowledge. And you also read books. These are three things that go hand in hand with one another. And um, this is what makes a complete package. Mm. Okay. And it can be very difficult. Ah, to sit for ages, it's not easy. Mm-hmm. To sit down for hours reading, it's not easy. Mm. To sit down and just memorize, it's not easy. Ah. So it's, it's something you're just going to have to ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make things easy for you. Um so to conclude, inshallah, I think these lines of poetry would be really nice. Um, because it goes in accordance to the hadith when the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, um, إِنَّ رَبَّكُمْ حَيٌّ كَرِيمٌ يَسْتَحِي مِنْ عَبْدِهِ إِذَا رَفَعَ يَدَيْهِ إِلَيْهِ إِنْ يُرُدُ مَا سِفْرًا Allah is too shy and too generous that when his servant stretches his hands out to Allah that he sends him back empty-handed. So you go to Allah Azza wa Jal. So the poet, he says, وَسَلْ مِنْ رَبِّكَ التَّوْفِيقَ فِيهَا وَأَخْلِصْ فِي السُّؤَالِ إِذَا سَأَلْتَ Ask your Lord for a tawfiq. وَأَخْلِصْ فِي السُّؤَالِ إِذَا سَأَلْتَ And also be sincere when you ask. وَنَادِي إِذَا سَجَدْتَ لَهُ اعْتِرَافًا بِمَا نَادَاهُ وَنَادِي إِذَا سَجَدْتَ لَهُ اعْتِرَافًا بِمَا نَادَاهُ ذُ النُّونِ بْنُ مَتَّى And when you go into prostration and you're calling out, okay, Call out with that which Yunus alayhi salatu wasalam called out with. La ilaha illa anta subhanak inni kuntu min al-zalimeen. Mm. Where you testify that no one has the right to be worshipped true except Allah. And you glorify Allah azza wa jal and you say that I've been from those who are oppressed. Because there's another hadith that states there's not a person who makes a dua with these wordings except that Allah will respond back to him. Allah. Okay, so you're showing your humility. 
when asking Allah Azza wa Jal. And look what he says, وَلَازِمْ بَابَهُ قَرْعًا عَسَاهُ سَيَفْتَحُ بَابَهُ لَكَ إِنْ قَرَعْتَ Keep knocking on that door. Keep knocking. And perhaps if you keep knocking, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open the door. SubhanAllah. So, you know, when we seek knowledge, the word impossible shouldn't exist. We should keep asking Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah, I really struggled. I don't think we're going to find time to speak about this. There was a point I could not memorize, Akhi. Mm. You know, and I just asked Allah Azza wa Jal. I remember the Institute kept on saying to me, ask Allah last third of the night. Yeah. And Allah will open doors, you know, inshaAllah ta'ala. Jazakal khair, Ustad, for, yeah, for, for we have, we have. all that you shared. And, uh, Jazakallah khair for having me on. No, it's, no, it was an absolute it, pleasure. It was you a know? pleasure. And uh, yeah. I hope that the viewers, just like myself, would benefit uh, mm. from this uh, speech and this discussion we've had. All those viewing, uh, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to benefit from the classes that we'll deliver Shalom. and all of the other reminders. Till next time, fi imanillah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.